Uh, okay, so today's tutorial is going to be on Apache Kafka, setting up Apache Kafka cluster and intera interacting with Kafka. Mm, so uh, at first, let's go over some slides and then uh, we can uh, we look into how we can interact with Kafka clusters that we can set up locally, as well as the Kafka cluster that we have set up uh, on the AWS instance. Uh, okay, maybe, so I think, I hope some of you have already started uh, looking into Kafka and working with Kafka. Uh, can someone tell me what Kafka is and why we would want to use Kafka? Anyone? Okay, not nice. Uh, I think Kafka is used for uh, streaming data, like streaming uh, data that came into like in different way. For example, we can have, we may have a producers and consumers. Producers being the the one that wrote that write the data or that produce the data or the inputs to the Kafka, and the consumers being consuming like the data that was inputted or given by the producer. So we, we, we can rephrase it as like subscription. So the consumers can subscribe on some topic and they can actually get the data while it's streamed. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's correct. Uh, so before we, we dive deep into the Kafka architecture, let, let's, first see, let's first look into Publish subscribe model. Uh, so publish subscribe messaging or pub sub messaging is a form of asynchronous service to service communication used in serverless and microservice architecture. And in pub sub model, any message published to a topic is immediately received by all of the subscribers to the topic. And the pub sub messaging can be used to enable uh, event driven architectures or to decouple applications in order to increase performance, reliability, and scalability. So in pub sub or publish subscribe model, what the, the normal architecture would look like. There would be uh, some publishers to, uh, to to a broker or some kind of messaging system, messaging broker system. Then there would be also some subscribers that would subscribe from a specific uh, broker architecture. So uh, the consumers would be able to subscribe or to consume all of the messages that are being uh, published by the publishers to the message broker system. Uh, so. The normal architecture of pub sub or publish subscribe architecture would we would look like this. So there will be publishers on the left side, and the publishers might be sending different types of data. Uh, it doesn't always have to be uh, the same format. Some might uh, send JSON data. Some might just send a uh, a raw public text data. Some might even send uh, an audio in byte format or so on. Some might also send it in Avro format and so on. There are lots of message formats that one can send uh, through message broker systems and each publisher will be sending different, might be sending different type of data format and they, they will also be, they, they might also be sending to a different broker system. And on the right side, there are the subscribers. So the subscribers will subscribe to the topic or to the broker that they want to uh, consume the message and they will only be getting the messages that are being written to that specific broker. So if you have a different or multiple broker architecture and inside each broker, there might be different topics. So uh, the, subscri the subscribers will, will only be able to subscribe or to consume messages that are in that specific topic and they won't have access to other topics in the uh, message broker. Okay, so what is Kafka? Uh, as Nathaniel said, and I'm sure that other, others have also looked into uh, Kafka and what Kafka is and why we why we would need to use Kafka. Uh, so first, Kafka is a distributed computing platform. One of the uh, one of the main reasons that we would use Kafka is the distributed nature of its architecture. Uh, by distributed, we mean that I, I think we've been also using distributed architecture on previous weeks. Uh, one example might be one thing that you will commonly hear is in Wave 3. On Wave 3, everything is uh, in a distributed format and uh, you'll be interacting with 
uh, uh, with the architecture that is already in a distributed format and in the tendering also uh, you might come across uh, similar terms uh, most of the architectures or most of the resources that we might use or that uh, we might interact are distributed and we need the distributed nature because of its fault tolerant and uh, because of its fault tolerant nature and the second one is the events or message streaming platform it might have act as event or message streaming platform and the publish and subscribe to stream of records as we have uh, seen in the previous in the previous slide there is the publisher and the, sub the subscriber that that one one might uh, that one can be able to publish and the others on the subscriber side can consume those message and it's also for torrent storage process records that they occur we can process data in real time or if we need we might process uh, uh, in bytes at a time at specific time interval so for this week uh, we are not processing the messages or we are not working on the data in real time but rather we are using uh, batch processing so at the given interval or Based on our schedule, we are taking all of the data that are stored on Kafka and then processing uh, all those data. So we might use, uh, we might choose uh, real-time streaming or uh, batch processing as per our need. And the other thing is uh, it replicates topics, uh, topic log partition to multiple servers. So if we have multiple servers and uh, it will Kafka will be able to replicate all of the topic logs to uh, multiple servers and it's full tolerant storage. Okay, so this is the normal uh, Kafka architecture that you would look if you have uh, multiple publishers as well as consumers. So uh, most of the uh, applications might be publishing or producing data to the Kafka. And on the other side, there might be applications that are consuming from the Kafka. So if we were not using Kafka, what we would uh, normally do is we might connect the applications together and our application would be tightly coupled and uh, it would be a messy uh, data structure. So just to show you a messy pipeline, uh, I found this on the internet. So each application is interconnected and uh, it, this is really this really makes it hard to even debug and even uh, uh, to, to make it less tolerant less fault tolerant but when you use kafka we have uh, a fault tolerant storage system or a message broker system that's at the center then every consumers and every publishers can subscribe or, or publish uh, to that specific message architecture message broker architecture but uh, if you are not using kafka one thing that uh, others mostly have been doing is they will connect the application directly to the, to the database and the ATL pipeline or the LT pipeline might start from that specific DB and also other applications might start consuming or publishing uh, from different points of the application. Okay, so what are Kafka messages? So Kafka messages are the unit of data using Kafka is called a message and it's the smallest entity that we can get on Kafka. So everything is sent as a message, whether it's it might be in different formats, but everything is sent as a message. And if you're approaching Kafka from a database background, uh, I think we can refer the messages as records uh, or rows in a database table. So each record or each row might be sent as a message into the Kafka topics. So they are the smallest things that we can refer on Kafka. And a message is simply an array of bytes as far as Kafka is concerned. So the data contained within it doesn't have to be specific format or meaning to Kafka. So any type of message can be sent to Kafka. It doesn't matter that the data source format doesn't matter. It might be in Avro format. It might be uh, in JSON format. Uh, it might be. It might even be an audio or so on. As long as we can uh, uh, encode that message into the right or appropriate format and define that on our schema, we can send any type of message to our Kafka, and the broker architecture uh, can handle all those messages in a fault tolerant way. Uh, so the message contents might be, uh, we might have a key used for partitioning and we might also have a value for each key, which is the content of the message and it's user defined. And finally, there is uh, automatically a generated timestamp for each of the messages that we are going to send to the Kafka architecture. Okay, then topics. So what are topics? So we have already seen about uh, 
uh, we have already seen about the messages in Kafka. So Kafka is composed of different entities, and one of them are one of them is messages, and the other one is topics. And messages in Kafka are categorized into topics. So each message that we are going to send is can be categorized into different topics uh, in the Kafka broker. So in a single broker, we can have multiple topics. Then in each topics, we can have uh, lots of messages being sent, being consumed or produced to that specific topic. And the closest analogy for a topic are database table or folder in file system. So uh, tables, not tables, but topics acts as a wrapper that are uh, taking all of the data in a Kafka that are separate, that will also separate it from other topics in the Kafka. So in a single Kafka broker, you can have multiple uh, topics and each topic will, uh, will have, we can, can contain different values or different messages in each of the topics. And if one consumer, let's say if one producer send a topic, uh, a message to a specific topic, the other topics will not be uh, aware of that specific message being sent to the other topics. So uh, they are uh, not, uh, they, they, they are not dependent on each other as long as the Kafka broker is working and as long as the Kafka cluster is functioning properly, each topic will function on its own and multiple topics per Kafka, there, there are multiple topics per Kafka instance and supports multiple producers and consumers. Each topics in a broker can, uh, can be connected to multiple producers as well as multiple consumers. And then there are the brokers. So the smallest entity in the Kafka is the uh, message. Then we have the topics that can contain multiple messages. And then we have the brokers and a single Kafka server is called a broker. Uh, so when we set up in a production environment, you would most likely set up uh, a multiple a multiple Kafka cluster in a distributed manner. So you might have uh, one Kafka broker in one region, in other Kafka broker in uh, region B, and so on. So you have a distributed uh, architecture of Kafka, and each cluster will be able to communicate to each other by using the Zookeeper. Will come into the concept of Zookeeper, but uh, Zookeeper will be able to manage all of the Kafka brokers and will uh, handle the load balancing as well as uh, repartitioning and so on. And the broker receives messages from producers, assigns offset to them and commits the message to the storage on disk. So when each message arrives to the Kafka topic, uh, it's up to the broker to receive those messages and assign the offsets. It will uh, uh, track the offsets of each topic and uh, when a new message arrives, it will increment the offsets based on the messages arriving to that specific topic. It also services consumers responding to fetch requests for partition and responding uh, with messages that have been committed to disk. And depending on the specific hardware and its performance characteristics, a single broker can easily handle thousands of partitions and millions of message per records. So based on the performance, we can uh, even on a single uh, Kafka broker, we can have multiple partitions and lots, thousands of messages within uh, a single Kafka broker. Okay, uh, producers. So we have already talked about producers. Producers are the one that produces message to the Kafka broker. So uh, producers are the one that will create a new message to that specific Kafka broker. And in that specific Kafka broker, there is a specific topic. So they will be writing message to a Kafka topic. And in general, a message will be produced to a specific topic when, uh, when a producer sends a message. And con consumers, on the other way, consumers are the one that read message or they are the subscribers to our PubSub uh, architecture. And in other published subscribe systems, these clients may be called subscribers or readers because they just subscribe to a specific message broker architecture and they will be able to ingest all of the data from that uh, topic and the consumers subscribers to one or more topics so a single consumer can subscribe to multiple uh, topics and can read or ingest data from different topics so each consumer is not uh, limited to a single uh, kafka topic but rather they can uh, consume to multiple topics this goes the same goes to kafka producers a a single producer can write into uh, multiple Kafka topics at the same time. And also the Kafka consumers can also read uh, Kafka messages uh, from multiple topics after subscribing to those topics. And the consumer keeps, uh, and the consumers 
keeps track of which message it has already consumed by keeping track of the offset. So each time a message is written to a Kafka topic, the offset will be incre the offset will increment by one because when we write one message to the Kafka topic, one message has been added to our topic, so the offset will in, uh, will be incremented by one. So the consumer will keep track of the offset that it, it is reading from the Kafka topic. Uh, so what are offsets in Kafka? So offsets are uh, just a number to track the message consumption by consumer in partition. Uh, on the hands-on experience, we look at how offsets can be used and uh, we can uh, we can uh, use different parameters or properties when reading from uh, from a Kafka topic. We can set uh, the the we can set the default uh, consuming property to be set to the beginning. So when we set it to the beginning, the offset will be reset to zero. So the Kafka consumer will be able to read from. Uh, the beginning or from the starting index. And if we specify from earliest, it will only be reading the newest uh, messages that are in the topic. And brokers keep track of what is sent and acknowledged. And there are two types of uh, acknowledgement that Kafka uses. The first one is the current offset. It is the last message sent to a given consumer. So Kafka will, the Kafka topic or the Kafka broker in general will uh, keep track of the current offset, which is the last message that is sent to the consumer, and the committed offset will keep track of the last message acknowledged by a consumer. So a message might be sent to a consumer or when a given subscriber uh, uh, is attached to a specific topic, a message might be sent, but uh, due to some uh, timeouts or failures, uh, that consumer might not consume that message properly. So the committed offset will keep track if the consumer actually receives that message. So there is that kind of verification that Kafka will handle uh, behind the scenes that will enable it to be fault tolerant and uh, there will be retries. So until the consumer consumes that message, we can specify the retries, the number of retries that that specific consumer can retry to retrieve the message or read that specific message from the topic. So we can increase that uh, retry the number of retries, or we can set it to zero if you don't want it on our specific application. Okay, finally, there is the zookeeper. So the zookeeper is the central real-time information store for Kafka. The, zoo the zookeeper is the one that will handle all of the broker management. And uh, topic rebalancing. And uh, when one of the brokers in the distributed architecture goes off, it will uh, also choose the leader and so on. Uh, enable us to manage the brokers. And in the brokers, there is the broker registry, active controller, broker failure management, and so on. And in the topics, there is also the concept of topic registry, partition leader management, and so on. So the zookeeper is the one that's responsible to manage all the brokers. So in a distributed architecture, you might have different multiple zookeepers as well as multiple uh, Kafka brokers. And those zookeepers will be able to manage brokers goes down or when there is some kind of failure. Zookeepers are responsible to choose another broker to be a leader and so on. Uh, so uh, we, we recommend you to read more about consumer groups, Kafka partitions, and Kafka clusters. When using, you might use a single Kafka cluster, but uh, we need to know how we can set up multiple uh, broker configuration because in a production environment, we won't uh, we will never deal with a single Kafka architecture because uh, we are concerned about the full tolerant nature of Kafka. So we need to have a distributed nature of a distributed Kafka architecture uh, as our setup. Uh, you can find some references, uh, some references here. Uh, we will share the slide. Before I move on to the application, uh, is there any question on the slides or the general concept? Okay, Tessa. Yeah, so uh, I get what you said about the brokers and Zookeeper, but what uh, what exactly is Kafka clusters? Uh, okay, so Kafka clusters are just the setup of multiple Kafka brokers. So in a single Kafka cluster, you will only have a single Kafka broker and a single Kafka Zookeeper. 
but when we are setting up uh, a Kafka cluster with multiple brokers, that will enable us to have a distributed architecture of Kafka with distributed uh, Kafka brokers in Zookeeper. So normally, the first, let's say just broker A will be in region A and broker B will be in region B. So even if uh, there is some failure on region A, that Kafka cluster will be able to ingest message from different producers and be consumed by different, by different subscribers. So it's just the arrangement of multiple Kafka cluster, of multiple Kafka brokers in the so okay basically the uh, use of it Kaka, so. in my scale or in a, in a global uh, type of uh, development uh, environment right so basically deploying everything yeah. globally like we might think it has a global link instead of just one or two or several uh, computers yes okay okay and it's very clear okay uh mohammed uh, I had the same question that uh, were asked by Fiseha, but uh, for uh, for the matter of clarification, so uh, the zoo uh, the zookeeper uh, consists of uh, multiple uh, Kafka clusters, and the Kafka Kafka clusters consist of uh, multiple brokers, and the brokers consist of multiple uh, topics. Uh, the go. Yeah, sorry, Mohammed. Uh, can you hear me? We lost you in the middle. Uh, or yes, I can hear you. Can hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. So, uh, what I said that. Um, uh, for, for the matter of clarification, uh, the Kafka Zookeeper consists of uh, multiple clusters and the clusters co cons consist of uh, multiple brokers and the brokers co consist of multiple uh, topics. Yes, it can consist of, multi uh, for example, the broker can consist of multiple, bro uh, multiple topics or not. You might just have a single Kafka topic uh, or if, if you choose, you can have multiple topics inside a single Kafka broker. Okay, so uh, the 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 cluster uh, consists of multiple brokers, right? So and the the zookeeper consists of multiple uh, clusters. Uh, so the. The zookeeper is just acting as the server that is managing all of the Kafka brokers. You don't necessarily need to have a single zookeeper in your Kafka cluster. And the zookeeper is part of the Kafka cluster. It's not something that is uh, outside the Kafka cluster setup. So you can have multiple zookeepers that will manage the different brokers that you have in your Kafka cluster. You might go with a single Kafka broker and a single zookeeper. So that Zookeeper will be able to manage that specific, uh, that single Kafka broker. But if you choose, you can also have a multiple Kafka cluster with multiple brokers in the multiple Zookeepers. So the role, one of the roles, not the only role, but one of the roles of the Zookeeper is to manage the Kafka brokers. Okay, so the highest uh, category is the Kafka cluster. Yes, the highest category is the Kafka cluster and Zookeepers are responsible to manage the Kafka cluster because we are mainly uh, uh, interested in the Kafka brokers when talking about Kafka cluster setup. And the uh, Zookeepers will be res responsible to handle all of the configurations and other requirements for the Kafka broker. And the Kafka brokers will handle the Kafka topics inside each broker. And inside each broker, there are the topics, then the message. There are also partitions that we can also discuss about. Okay, thank you. Okay, Takaka. Uh, okay, uh, I I was lost in the middle when you were you were uh, talking about the topic. So we have a, pro a producer which is producing message to the topic, and the consumer which is consuming the message from the topic, right? Yes. 
so can we have multiple uh, consumer or multiple producer on the same topic yes yes that, that that's possible okay. so Thank that's you. what one thing that makes kafka uh, uh really good at handling different messages from a single topic there can be multiple kafka producers that can write to that specific kafka topic and can also have multiple kafka consumers that can consume from that specific kafka topic Thank you. Okay, Josias? Yes, uh, I think the concept of uh, uh, broker is not clear for me. So if you can, you can come back on it. Okay, sure. Uh, so uh, brokers are the one in a Kafka cluster that will hold all of the message, the topics. So in a broker, in a Kafka broker, we can have uh, uh, multiple Kafka topics. Maybe let me try to. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, you guys can see my screen. Okay, uh, so just to go over brokers. Brokers are. Uh, uh, so brokers are the one that will hold the Kafka topics and each Kafka topic holds the Kafka message that you're writing to. So for example, you just want, let's say, you just want to write, uh, you just want to write uh, a JSON file to your Kafka topic, and you might have uh, a JSON in, in your JSON file, a single JSON file, not file, but a single JSON data. So the first one, the first message might be with a key, uh, let's say, message, and the value might be uh, hello world. So when you send when you send that specific message that is in JSON format to the Kafka, the Kafka will be able to ingest that and it will be stored inside your Kafka topic that you specified when sending that message. And inside your Kafka topic, uh, the Kafka topics are arranged into partitions. So each topic are classified into different or multiple partitions that you will also be able to specify when creating a Kafka topic. So inside each topic, there might be different partitions, or you might also go to with a single partition inside inside that Kafka broker. Then, not broker, I'm sorry, inside that Kafka topic. And in that Kafka topic, let's say you only have a single partition, that message will go will only go to that partition, which is partition zero. So every time you send a message to that topic, Kafka will be able to ingest that message from the producer and store it in the Kafka uh, in the single Kafka partition that you created inside your topic. So brokers are the one that will hold all of your Kafka topics. You can have multiple Kafka topics that are separate. Uh, as an example, for this week, what we did was we created different, uh, we, we created a, a Kafka, a managed Kafka, we instantiated a managed Kafka cluster. So uh, all groups uh, starting from group one to group five will be able to access that Kafka. But let's say uh, you are in group one. So group one will create a Kafka topic with uh, 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 maybe group one Kafka topic. Yes, group one hyphen Kafka topic. So every message that group one is sending to that Kafka topic will be separate from the message that group two is sending to their own topic, which starts with group two. So we. Group two's Kafka topic might start with G2, and group one's Kafka topic might start with G1. And the message in topic one will be separate uh, from the messages that are in topic two. So you might have multiple Kafka topics within a single Kafka broker, and within each brokers, within each topics, there might be multiple partitions or not. You might only go with a single Kafka partition. And inside those partitions, that's where the messages are being written into. So let's say uh, group one sends a message uh, saying hello world in a JSON format, and that message will go into that specific topic that group one created, then to that specific partition that they specified when creating the Kafka cluster. If we specify a partition with only a Kafka cluster with only a Kafka topic with only one partition, the message will go to that partition every time. When each member of group one sent to that Kafka topic. So the brokers, the the overall picture of the brokers is that it will hold the, the different 
topics that are in the broker and the messages that are in each topic of those uh, brokers. So they're just uh, kind of a wrapper of your Kafka topics and uh, your Kafka messages. So the smallest unit or the smallest uh, structure in your Kafka is, are the messages, then uh, there might be the partitions in that topic, then after the topic, there is the Kafka broker. Uh, is it clear? Just yes. Or I think we can talk more about Kafka topics once we start the implementation of Kafka. Okay, take okay. a go. Okay, Tamar. So, uh, what is the difference between uh, uh, Kafka clusters and the AWS zones or GCP zones or other zones? I, I'm failing to understand the difference between them. Okay, so zones are just a concept in cloud computing. So uh, we have different regions, we have different zones that we are setting up our machines. For, for example, in our case, we are using AWS. So uh, we are instantiating EC2 instance, which is just a virtual machine on AWS. So after instantiating the instance of EC2, uh, we can use multiple zones so that when one of the when one of the instance fails, when one of the instance fails in one of the zones, we can be sure that our instance will keep running because we have uh, the instances duplicate on another zone. Not exact duplicate, but let, just uh, to make it clear, we'll have the same data that is on zone one. Uh, we'll also have that data on zone two. So if there is a failure or some kind we can always have our data. So uh, you ask what's the difference between zones and Kafka brokers or Kafka clusters? Yes. Tamar? Yes, so the yes. difference is that we are, okay, so what we did was we just set up the Kafka cluster to be on two different zones. So we have two Kafka brokers. You will be able to access two Kafka brokers. So the first Kafka broker is in on zone one and the second one is on zone two. So even if one of the uh, zones uh, fail or there is some kind of outage, outage or timeout, we, you, you still will be able to access zone two then Kafka will be able to, the zookeeper will handle that and Kafka will be able to uh, rebalance and once zone one is active again, uh, it will share the data that zone one didn't access while uh, it was out. So it's something that's completely unrelated, but uh, we'll use zones to, uh, uh, to have the distributed nature of Kafka architecture. Okay. Uh, any other question? Okay, uh, if not, let me share my entire screen and uh, uh, we will see how we can interact with Kafka. So uh, before going to the instance, yes. Uh, okay, so I have, sorry, uh, I have a single uh, Kafka cluster with a single zookeeper and a single Kafka. So uh, this is the a Docker container that we can spin up uh, the zookeeper as well as the Kafka uh, together. So the configuration is very simple. So we are using Zookeeper, we are using it from an image Bitsunami, they are one of the providers of Kafka, and we are specifying the ports that we can access Zookeeper, and then the Kafka looks like it's also, we are using the Bitsunami for the Kafka, and we are exposing two ports. One port is for the internal communication, and the second port is to uh, publicly access Kafka from our machines 
outside the Docker container. So we'll be using the second port to access Kafka externally uh, from our local machines. And that these specific uh, advertised listeners will enable us to access Kafka from our local machines. And when we start this uh, Docker container, we can access Kafka from our machine. So I will just uh, start uh, Kafka from, uh, I will start the Kafka container since it's a different name. I will use uh, minus F then Kafka. Okay, is that the question? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's a question. I would like okay, to know go. where you, you got the YAML file. It's like you have uh, uh, initialized. Yeah. Okay, I think you can find, uh, I, I would prefer to use the confluence image, but since this was a file that is in our GitHub account, I'm going to use that. But you can go ahead on the internet. There are uh, popular Kafka service providers. One of them uh, is Bitnami, but there is also Confluence, which you can use, uh, which they have additional service for Kafka, like uh, Confluence backend service, Kafka management service, and many more. Uh, maybe let me just go Confluence Kafka Docker container. Then you can find, since these are the well known. Uh, providers of Kafka, you can go ahead and look in their configuration and take out some of the configurations that you don't want. So this is their Kafka, for their Kafka, they have their Docker image under Confluent Inc slash CP minus Kafka. So you can set it up manually by just using the image, the image name of the Docker, then set up the uh, the other configurations that you want. If not, you can also try to find uh, the actual Docker Compose file for the configurations. So I, I would recommend you to look into Confluent, primarily into Confluent when, uh, if you want to work uh, with Kafka on your own, if you want to set up the Docker files and the entire Docker configurations, uh, Confluent is really the best when it comes with uh, playing around with Kafka. Bitnami is also another service that we can use. They are also really good and have uh, huge support on the uh, community. So this is something that you would want also to look at. But we'll, uh, I will share, maybe I can share this file to you and you can start the Kafka cluster on your own. But this will only use a single Kafka Zookeeper uh, and a single Kafka service or Kafka broker. Okay. Okay, so uh, let me start this in the touch mode. Uh, okay, I think I might have removed, yes. I think I've, I might have removed the image. Yes, uh, I have removed the image, so maybe let me just, uh, go to my terminal and start Kafka. Uh, yes, let me just start Kafka locally and we'll be able to interact with the local Kafka installation with the local Kafka setup. I've set up uh, using Confluent. So uh, when starting Confluent local, it will start the Zookeeper. The Kafka schema registry, Kafka rest, and so on. So, uh, under Confluent, you will have different services that Confluent is providing to be able to interact with Kafka, to monitor your Kafka's broker sales, and so on. There are also other services. So, different services in the Zookeeper and Kafka and local. Services uh, test. Yeah, so uh, every, everything is up and now I'm good to go. Uh, so the first thing that I can do is I can check the number of topics uh, that I have or the number of topics that are in the Kafka broker. So since I'm uh, on, a, on a local machine, I'm not using uh, a distributed Kafka cluster. I would only be using a single Kafka cluster with a single Kafka and with a single Kafka broker and a single Zookeeper. 
uh, Kafka. So the first thing that you would want to do is to specify the bootstrap server. The bootstrap server is the one that's, uh, that is, uh, uh, that will be able to interact with the Kafka since we are, since we want to interact directly with the Kafka broker, we need to specify the address that can be able to interact with that specific Kafka broker. So in our case, when setting up mostly, when setting up Kafka clusters, uh, the Kafka broker will be av available on port 9092. So it's on localhost port 9092. Then to list the topics that I have, I can specify the minus minus list argument. Then when I press, but when I press enter, uh, we can see that I have, these are the default uh, uh, topics that Confluent will create automatically when you instantiate a Kafka cluster. These are used for internal topic management, partition management, and so on. So Kafka will also use the Kafka, uh, will also use Kafka topics to manage the Kafka broker and the Kafka cluster. Uh, so after listing out, I've also tried to create uh, test topics. So uh, for now, let me just create a new Kafka topic, Kafka topics with the same arguments. So to create a Kafka topic, we'll use the hyphen hyphen create argument, and then I will specify the topic name. Uh, maybe for this case, uh, I will use tenac, tenac dot maybe hyphen demo. Then the next thing that, uh, sorry for this. So the next thing that I can do is I will uh, specify the partition. Uh, since I only want to have a single partition, if based on your case, you might want to have multiple partitions inside your Kafka topic. Uh, but for now, since I'm not using uh, anything that's advanced, I will go with a single partition. Then I can also specify the replication factor. These are the required uh, parameters when creating a Kafka topic. Uh, if we were on a distributed uh, Kafka architecture, we can use uh, uh, other application factor. We can use two or three based on the number of brokers that are available. But since I only have access to a single broker, I will specify the number one. But if you have more brokers, you can uh, specify other numbers as well. Mm. Okay. Partition. Partition. Yes. Okay. So it was partitions. So uh, a new topic has been created with the name Tenac uh, as a demo. So if I now go and list the uh, the topics that are available. Mm. Yes, so you can see that Tenac and demo is the first one. So uh, we can have a look at the topics that we created and we can also create topics. Uh, maybe let me create uh, another topic, uh, Tenac demo hyphen two. And this will also create another topic. And now when I list the topics, we can see that uh, Tenac demo hyphen two is also available under the list of topics. Okay, so the next thing that uh, I want to show you is uh, we can uh, we can produce a message to our Kafka topic as well as we can consume the message from uh, our Kafka topic. So uh, maybe let me uh, split my terminal and on the one side, what I will do is Kafka topics. I will uh, produce a message to my Kafka topic. Post nineteen ninety two. Uh, what was the topic name? I think it was Tenac demo. Uh, okay. Let me see. Kafka. Yes, Tenac demo. Uh, 
Uh, not Kafka topic, so it should be Kafka console producer since I'm going to produce messages to my Kafka topic. So Kafka console producer, then my bootstrap server, which is on localhost 1992, then I'm going to produce to this specific topic. So every time that you want to produce a message to your Kafka, you need to specify the topic that you want the message to be written into. So I'm specifying the topic tenac minus hyphen demo as my topic that I'm going to write into. So now when I press enter, uh, I can see that uh, the current sign starts and now I can start producing to my uh, Kafka cluster, to my Kafka topic. So on the second terminal, I can uh, start listening uh, the topic. So I will use the Kafka console consumer then the bootstrap server is on localhost 1992. Then the topic is going to be the same. So I want to read the content uh, of the topic that my producer is writing into. So it's just hanging there. Now, when I go to uh, the first terminal and let me produce uh, maybe pin academy d6. Uh, as you can see on the right side, uh, 10 Academy B6 is appearing or it's being consumed by my consumer. Let me just press enter, then uh, hello there. Oops. After... So uh, the messages are being written uh, into the topic, then uh, our consumer is able to uh, read those messages from the topic in real time. So as you can see, we can read the message in real time and stream it in real time, uh, or else we can just uh, schedule an interval and we can read the messages on the specified interval from the Kafka broker and then process it as per our need. So the second thing that I can do is let me split again in uh, Kafka console consumer, then the bootstrap and let me uh, let me subscribe to, to the same topic. So, uh, okay, guys, wh what do you think that will happen when I uh, press enter? I'm adding an additional consumer to the same topic. What will be? What should be the output? What do you think will be the output? It will load the, the two messages. Hello there and good afternoon. Uh, okay, in the Ten Academy Part Six, the first message, right? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? It shouldn't load, right? Why? Because that's another consumer. Okay, so the same cons another consumer can't consume from a Kafka topic from a single Kafka topic. Didn't you know, it can, that? Yes, mm -hmm. it can load. Uh, I think it can load, but this time, let's say the consumer could be dashboard and the other could be website or uh, I mean mobile app. So this mm -hmm. time, the, the the first consumer has already loaded that was what was there. Mm -hmm. So the new consumer uh, will uh, load the new message maybe okay okay uh, so let me just press enter and as you can see it's just hanging there and it's not displaying the message so uh, the way that kafka is organized is that each consumer will consume from the topic that uh, exists in our kafka cluster and if uh, another consumer reads the message or consumes the message from that topic, the offset will be incremented. So let's say that since we have already written three messages, the offset might be three. Then when this additional, when this new consumer comes in the Kafka cluster and tries to consume the data from uh, the Kafka topic, it will see that Kafka will every time register the offset, the current offset that is in the Kafka topic. And since the first consumer has read the data or the three messages, the current offset will be three. So the Kafka consumer, the, the new Kafka consumer will be 
uh, reading from that specific offset specified. So if it's on the third offset, it will start reading from the third offset. And on the third offset, since there is no additional message, uh, the new consumer won't be able to read any messages that are that were written to the Kafka. So if you want to, uh, so as you can see, the process a total of zero messages. So zero messages have been processed. If we clear this out and we can specify additional uh, parameter, so um, we can use the beginning from the beginning parameter. If we specify this parameter on different client side libraries, the the parameters might be different. So you have to look into each uh, client libraries that you're going to use when working with Kafka. But on the console side, the parameter name is from beginning. So when you specify the from beginning parameter, Kafka will be able to consume the message uh, from the beginning of the offset. So the offset will be uh, reset to zero for that specific consumer. And that consumer will be able to read the messages from uh, uh, from the beginning of the Kafka topic. So if I now press enter, as you can see, it has now read the entire message that is in the Kafka topic. And we can also go and uh, write additional message. So let's say additional, additional consumer. So as you can see, both consumers are subscribed to a single topic and every message that I'm publishing to that Kafka topic all of the consumers available on the topic will be able to consume that message in real time. So it does. There is no limit to the number of consumers and to the number of consumers, the, to the number of consumers and to the number of producers that can write or read a message from a Kafka topic. So you can have multiple producers writing to the to to a single Kafka product to a single Kafka topic, and also you can have multiple consumers reading from a single Kafka uh, topic. Uh, is there a question? Uh, Tamar? Can you come back to how you got the messages for the second consumer? I was not listening properly. Uh, the, the parameters that I've used for the second consumer? Yes. So uh, other parameters or other uh, properties that I've used will remain the same. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to consume. So you'll use the Kafka console consumer, then the uh, the address of the broker that you want to connect into. And then you'll specify, since you are subscribing to a specific topic, you'll specify the topic that you want to consume from. And if you want to read the message from the beginning, or if you want to set the offset to zero, you'll specify the hyphen hyphen from hyphen beginning uh, parameter. Mm, so there are other parameters. If you want to start somewhere and not from the beginning, is it possible? Uh, I, I think yes, it's possible. When I'm not sure when using the console side, but when you use a client side library, you can read from a specific part, from a specific offset of that topic when using uh, the Kafka client libraries that are available for Python or even other languages. But I'm not sure if you can use that uh, on the console side. So for the producer side, they are, we will be having a, like a buffer to store those uh, information that we want to send for the uh, consumer to consume, right? Yes. Yes, after all, you'll be surprised by the architecture of Kafka. The underlying architecture is just uh, a specific location in your disk. If you are using Kafka locally, uh, every message will be stored in a, in a specific partition of your disk or your local operating system. If you are using on Docker, that will also be stored on that specific Docker container. And if you are using it on an instance, that will also be stored on the instance storage. So Kafka is using the storage, but it's making the uh, message handling, full tolerance, and other uh, and other aspects of Kafka that makes it unique, much more reliable and robust. That's what makes it different from actually storing it on our local machine or uh, on different databases. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Kusar?
Yeah, uh, maybe I can ask you when uh, the session is over. OK, OK. OK, so uh, uh, if you can connect uh, to the Kafka broker by using our uh, terminal or console, we can now go ahead and connect uh, Johannes. OK, uh, I have clearly understood how to create a topic, but uh, I still don't uh, know how to begin uh, the services. I mean. Uh, Margaret and uh, Fisher are trying to help me, but uh, I missed you when, uh, when you were copying the, from the... Okay, let me check it. You were checking from the Constant uh, ANC? Uh, Confluent, yes. Uh, Confluent, oh, sorry. Yes, the Confluent. I'm now using my local Confluent installation, but you can go ahead and use Docker container to spin up all of your Kafka cluster. You can set it up in uh, to be in a uh, distributed manner or in multiple Kafka cluster architecture with multiple Kafka brokers as well as multiple Kafka zookeepers. Uh, if not, you can also use a single Kafka cluster with a single Kafka broker and a single Kafka uh, zookeeper. Okay, what do you uh, recommend for our uh, project, I mean? Okay, so for, for this week's project, Kafka has already been set up for you. So, and I will show you how you can connect to your Kafka and how each group should create uh, a topic on your instances. But yeah, you don't need to set up I'm... Kafka. Yes, you don't yeah, need to set up Kafka. Set up. Yes. 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 So everyone, if, if you're interested, go ahead and try to set up Kafka by using Docker or installing it locally. I recommend to use Docker, but setting up setting it up locally will also give you a good understanding of how Kafka is uh, actually uh, structured, how you can connect the Zookeeper with the Kafka. You'll have a hands-on experience on, on how to set up Kafka. Once you get a good understanding of how Kafka is uh, how Kafka is set up locally on your machine and how you can connect the Kafka with the Zookeeper, you should move to use uh, to using Docker. Uh, to set up your Kafka cluster. But for this week, we have already set up uh, the Kafka cluster with using the two brokers on your AWS instance. Okay, so... Uh, uh, Margaret? Um, so you've already set up Kafka clusters for us. Um, what are we expected to do, like create the topics or? Yes, because you want to publish a uh, message in your project, you, you want to send the audio to your Kafka. So you are publishing, uh, you are publishing the message to your Kafka and you are also reading or consuming uh, from your Kafka. So you need to create a topic and you will be writing it to the topic as well as reading from the topic. Okay. Uh, okay, is there another tutorial after uh, can someone confirm? Is there another tutorial? Yes, yes, I think there oh. is a female only session. Okay, at what time? Uh, okay, let me check. It's already there was already an announcement. Uh, Okay, then. Yeah, uh, no. should be good now. It's now? Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm it's, sorry. It's, it's, I think it's scheduled now. There's okay. female updates. Oh, okay. Uh, let me uh, first then, confirm with Anastasia, then I'll get back to you guys. Sure, sure. Uh, I'll try to wrap up within five minutes. Let me just show you how we can uh, use the client side libraries. So uh, we can, we have the Python side library, you can also. Uh, get that on JavaScript. Uh, there are actually, you can't use the client side library on uh, front end frameworks. Um, uh, as far as, I, yes, as far as I know, you can't use the Kafka client libraries on uh, front end frame, framework for some reason, but they might have changed that now. Uh, there is the Kafka JS on, on JavaScript side that you can use on the server side or on Node.js or other server side rendering tools. And on Java as well, you can find multiple uh, libraries that you can use uh, as a client side. So for Python, I'm using Kafka Python. So you can install that using Kafka Python. Uh, you can install that using pip Kafka Python. Uh, I've already installed that. So 
The next thing that you'll do is uh, you'll instantiate your Kafka admin client, then you'll specify the bootstrap server. This is exactly the same thing that we've been doing when using uh, Kafka by using the console and you will specify the address that you want to connect. Since I've already spin up the Kafka cluster locally, uh, the address will be on localhost, then the port it is, which is on 1992. And for the Kafka Python library, we need to specify the version based on the version that we have installed. Uh, this is something that you can look into uh, uh, on the on the official documentation. Then I'm just putting I'm just putting the API version, then the list of topics. And then I'm creating a new topic, a new Kafka topic. Let me uh, demo topic one. I'm creating a new topic. Then I'm creating the message that the topic has been created. Then I'm listing the topic. So uh, let me run that. Uh, it's admin.py under cart. Uh, so these were the available topics that were uh these were the available topics that were available on my kafka broker and after creating a new topic the topic has been created and we can now see demo hyphen topic hyphen one uh, should be present in the newly created topic uh demo yes demo hyphen topic hyphen one is now created then what i can do is i can produce the message to uh, that specific topic which is demo topic hyphen one uh, so when sending, you, you should always specify the topic. It's something that is required. So I will specify the topic that I want to write into. Then I'm sending this message in byte format. You might uh, choose different formats to send uh, your message. You might use the Avro format, the JSON format after being encoded. Uh, and you can also use the byte format. So I'm sending uh, in bytes format the uh, word pineapple. Let me split my timing my terminal and uh, it's already been activated and uh, on the second side I can uh, I can start my consumer and my consumer I, let me change the uh, the topic of my consumer as well which is demo hyphen topic hyphen one and my producer will be sending to this specific topic and my uh, my consumer will be able to consume that from this specific uh, from this specific topic. So cart slash consume. So it's now consuming. And let me now start producing to the topic. And then uh, produce. So as, as, I, as you can see uh, on the offset zero, uh, this specific uh, message has been written. If I now go and change the message to Apple, Uh, the offset has been updated to one and a new data has been uh, written or a new message has been consumed by my consumer. So this is how we can use the Kafka client when, uh, this is how we can use the Kafka client to interact with your uh, Kafka broker and create new topics as well as uh, write and read from the Kafka topic. So the last thing that I'm going to show you is how you can interact with your uh, instances Kafka cluster. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to be signed in into your instance and you'll only be able to access the Kafka broker from your instance. Uh, I'm now just logged in to uh, Groups3's instance and I have the same code, but the only difference is that uh, you can now specify the different brokers available and you'll use the broker that we have uh, given to you. So since we have, we have, uh, we have, we have created two brokers as in our Kafka architecture, You'll be uh, you'll need to specify the two brokers, which is the first broker. This is the first broker in US East One, and this is also in US East One, but on different regions. So this is two Kafka brokers on different regions, and you need to specify the API version. And everything else will be the same. I will just change this uh, demo instance, and uh, let me run client yes and the topic has been created it's now using the uh, the kafka broker inside the aws instance that the broker that has been instantiated for you so you'll be using this specific endpoint 
as your bootstrap server. When I was using that locally, I specified localhost to uh, interact with my Kafka broker. But since this is something that is on the AWS instance, you can access it using the specified address in the port is 1992. When one of the broker goes down, Kafka's Zookeeper will be able to handle that and will manage the brokers, the available brokers, and you'll be sure that your broker will always be available to use. And on the consumer side, you will also need to change the uh, the, boot, the bootstrap servers and everything will still stay the same. Uh, is it clear? And also make sure that you uh, consume and produce to the same topic. And for group one, one thing that I want to emphasize, I think Azar has already mentioned that on Slack. So for group one, since we are using uh, a single Kafka, uh, not a single Kafka cluster, but uh, two Kafka brokers with a single Kafka Zookeeper, you'll all be accessing the same Kafka uh, brokers. So make sure that you have you are accessing different Kafka topics on each group. So group one's topic, when you are creating a topic, group one's topic should start with group one, hyphen the name that you want to give for your Kafka topic. And for group two, the same goes it should start with G2, then hyphen, and the name that you want to give for that specific topic. You might, each group can create multiple Kafka topics, but be sure that you are creating, uh, you are naming your uh, Kafka topics based on the name that we provided. So group one should start with G1, group two should start with G2, and the same goes on uh, until group five. So each group needs to start their Kafka topic name with G1, G2, and their, resp their respective group name. After that, you can create multiple Kafka topic on each group, and you'll be able to consume and produce uh, the messages from your own, only from your group. So group one should only be consuming or producing from their own topics that they created, which starts with G1, and G2 group two should also be accessing or producing and consuming from that specific topics that they created in their group. Uh, is it clear? Yeah, uh, you did, yeah? Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. I'm sorry. No problem, uh, go on. Okay, I thought you might not be, but yeah, I just... No, okay, so uh, okay. The, the question I have was uh, how we were supposed to run this uh, Kafka command on uh, the machines, but as you specified, we're not speci exactly uh, going to run the command the dot sh commands so i i changed my question to uh where do we find the name of the servers uh we have uh, is it not provided on the slack announcement earlier I today see that. maybe maybe if it is okay i can i can get that okay the, the broker's address should be specified uh on i'm sorry Okay, no, don't worry about that. I will uh, communicate that. So I think the, you will communicate that with us, right? With us, yes. right? Yes. Okay. So, but if that wasn't the case, and if we were going to run the uh, applications, I'm sorry, the commands manually by typing them on the terminal, I'm a little bit lazy on Docker. That's why I'm asking you this question. How are we supposed to, uh, uh, how were we supposed to write those commands? I mean, where was the folder located? when this uh when we install this kafka using docker i know the i uh, know we are going to use this uh brokers but just just for the understanding can you tell me that where the uh, folder is yeah, will be located sure, when sure. we install kafka using okay docker? okay so uh to answer your first question i think other has specified the broker address that you are going to use so this is these are these are two brokers, two broker, two oh. different broker addresses, and you can use this address to connect to your Kafka. And for the second question, when you are using Docker to uh, to spin up your Kafka cluster, it will be yeah. stored in the Docker's container. Normally, to access the Kafka commands, you should uh, enter into an interactive shell. So on Docker, when you want to execute uh, a specific container, you need to enter into the interactive shell and execute that command. So when using normally on most of the Docker containers, I think it's found in slash opt, then the the name of the container or the name of the provider. So uh, I think on this case, yes, 
we are using Vietnamese. If I now pull the image, uh, maybe let me exit this one. Uh, you, after going into the interactive shell of your Docker container, or uh, so let's say that you want to in, uh, you want to enter into the interactive shell of the Kafka container, you yeah. use Docker exec minus it then the name of the container. After entering into the, the interactive shell, you will go to the slash opt directory. That's where your Kafka yeah. configuration is stored. Slash oh, opt, then please. slash the provider of the Kafka. So it mm -hmm. might be Tsunami, then slash you should find the Kafka directory, then that's, you that was that's exactly my question, where the folder is. Thank you. You yes. answered but thank you very much. On different providers of Kafka, you might find it on a different directory. So you'll have to look on the internet where the actual Kafka is set up or where the actual Kafka uh, directory Container is, is going to be. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Margaret, last question. Um, so the cat in this case, your cat folder is a Kafka cluster. Uh, my cat, what, what do you mean by cat folder? Uh, from your VS code, um, there was a folder. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I'm using this locally. So, uh, if you see my admin configuration, I'm using the local host uh, address of my Kafka broker because I've spin up my Kafka using uh, my Kafka using Confluent locally. I'm not using the Docker or uh, the instances broker that we created. We can't I can't access the instance broker from my machine. You'll have to look into your uh, instance to be able to access the Kafka uh, on your machine because we have set the address or the network that are accessible to the Kafka to be only accessed from the instance. Um, no, I was asking if that cat folder with the admin consumer produces a cluster by itself. Uh, okay, I'm not exactly sure if I got you, Krish, but are you saying that, or can you elaborate more? Like when you create a Kafka cluster, it will, will it, will it include the contents of the cat, like an admin? No, 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 it, it doesn't. This is something that I've created. So the Kafka, the, the, the Kafka container or your local setup of Kafka is something that is separate. After I, in, after I instantiated the Kafka cluster on my machine, it will be available on localhost port 1992 to be used by any application. So one of the ways to use is from my console locally. And the second uh, option is to use the Kafka client libraries that are available. So one of the libraries available on Python on the programming language Python is the Kafka Python. So when you use Kafka Python, you can access that broker using the address, which is localhost 1992. This is not related. This cart folder is not related to the Kafka. Okay. This is your application logic. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Kirsten, just... Yes, it's the question. I, I don't know. I, I would like to know how to assess uh, a local host when I'm in the distance machine. For example, I'm using Airflow and I would like to get the dashboard. I, I don't think we can hear you. You, you did, yeah. Hi, you did, yeah. We can't hear you. Okay, guys, I think he's having issues with his connection. Um, so if you guys don't mind, please, can we take the questions to Slack? Because yes. there, there was a session that was supposed to happen right now. Uh, okay, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you guys hear me now? Oh, he's back, yes. 
yes, let me just answer Joseph's question and we'll, we'll end the, uh, the technical session. Uh, so Joseph, uh, if you remember that you were able to access the notebooks uh, uh, on your local machine, right? Joseph? Yes, yes. So you need to set up that on your config, but for those of you that are using VS code, one thing that you can do is you can forward the port on VS code. There is the port section. So uh, I think this, yes, this is group three instance. I just forwarded the port, uh, the localhost 8007. And let's say you are running Airflow on port 8080. Uh, sorry. So you just can forward your port if you are using base code. The other thing that you can use is you can add that on your config and that port will be forwarded to your local machine. So the same way that you are able to access your notebooks on your local machine, you will also be able to access the AWS, the, uh, the, other, inst the other ports that, are, that you want to access locally from, from your instance. So for example, if you want to set up Airflow and access it locally, you just have to forward that specific port to your local machine and you'll be able to uh, access that on your local machine. So even if you are building a front-end application, let's say someone is building uh, the front-end application for this week's challenge, you need to forward, uh, if you are setting up React application, you need to forward the port 3000 so that port 3000 will be accessible on your local machine. Uh, is that clear, Josias? Yes, it's clear, but uh, if you can, you can show me how to do it. Okay, uh, for some reason, it's taking long to open up the instance, but there is a port section. I'm not exactly sure how you can set up, how you can set that up using the config, but uh, you have the config file that you use to set up for the notebooks, right? You have specified the port of uh, the notebook. It was on port yeah. 8007. Did, did you need to that port on your config file? Yes, I think. So the same way that you specified that port on your config, you can also specify the port that you want to access locally. So for Airflow, it might be on 8080. For your front-end application, it might be on port 3000. You'll be specifying that port on your uh, config variable. If you don't want to use the config on base code, if you are using base code, there is a port section that you can switch into and you just can add that specific port. Okay, for some reason, it's still not opening, but uh, I will share that once uh, uh, we end the session. Okay, just remind me if I forget to share that to you and you should be able to talk. Your uh, the the posts that are available on your list. Uh, should I stop the recording and start taking? Yes, yes, please. And um, and we okay. can just continue this on the call.